On Tuesday, the Senate Transportation Committee advanced a bill that would allow undocumented migrants to obtain a restricted driver's license. Our Samantha Martinez takes a closer look at the proposal and how it would affect some Idaho families. About 37,000 undocumented immigrants live in Idaho, working in agriculture, hospitality, construction, and other industries. Many of them live in fear of being separated from their families if they are pulled over for a minor traffic violation. I'm from here, Idaho, and I raised my children here in Idaho, and unfortunately it's been without their father. Because, let me tell you a story, one day we had to take the kids to the pediatrician, and he dropped us off, and then when he went back to go get us, we waited for hours for him to come, but he never came. What happened was he was on his way back and he got pulled over and stopped and he got removed from our lives. Senator Jim Guthrie from McCammon is sponsoring a bill to provide licenses and driver's training for undocumented immigrants. So what is Senate Bill 1081? It's an effort to change Idaho code found in chapter three, Title 49 deals with the issuance of a restricted driver's license. This licensing option would be available to all persons provided they meet other licensing criteria. For example, a restrictor driver's license could be issued in lieu of a star card, a real ID card, or a conventional class D license, and the option might be attractive to someone who wants to limit the amount of information they share. That said, the focal point of my remarks today will be the opportunity for licensure for someone who cannot establish lawful presence in the United States. Senator Guthrie partnered with an organization called Poder that mobilizes and organizes the Latino and immigrant community for cultural and policy change. Their latest effort is the Manejando Sin Miedo campaign, which translates to driving without fear. Comprehensive immigration reform hasn't happened in a while, hasn't happened since Reagan. Um, there currently isn't a lot of relief for us. The system's backed up. We need driver's licenses to get to and from work, to go drop off our kids at school, to do normal things that you and I do every day. It is with great joy for me to announce that we have over 8,000 signatures that were gathered in the last two months in support of this bill. In the nine districts that y'all represent in this committee, we were able to collect over 2,400 signatures, with over half coming from Senator Trakel's district. In the end, we had signatures come to us from over 34 of 44 of Idaho's counties. The bill is largely supported by agriculture businesses and organizations like Idaho's Dairymen Association. We've been working with our delegation members in D.C. for over a decade as Idaho agriculture to try and find practical solutions for immigration reform in the country. That's something that we will continue to do, but to date, Congress has failed us and they've not found uh, agreements on, on an immigration policy that works for the state of Idaho or Idaho agriculture or any, any other state in the country for that matter. Uh, this places additional burdens on the state and our communities. Uh, this restricted driver's license bill is targeted at, at relieving some of those burdens by providing a pathway for somebody that's here without status to be able to get a driver's license and then subsequently obtain insurance. And as Senator Guthrie articulated, go through the same process you and I do to get a Class D license so we get the, the book training and the road proficiency training and testing. But many in the law enforcement community are skeptical. Sheriffs in general do not feel that issuing this uh, restricted driving uh, card to somebody that's broken, potentially broken, I don't, or uh, federal immigration laws is not a good good policy for, for sheriffs. This bill does not talk about what documents will be accepted by ATD. Um, the only thing I can rely on is what the current driver's manual accepts for documents, um, and it has a whole list of things that most people applying for this will not have. So I'm not sure what the what ITD is going to look at when they look at what documents it will accept. Estefania Mandragón, executive director of Poder, says some opposition comes from individuals labeling undocumented immigrants as criminals. For me, it you know you're you're talking about some of my family members. Uh, they're here contributing. Um, and, you know, in jobs that a lot of Idahoans do not want to take. So, and so they are a support for Idaho um, and they do pay taxes in whatever way that, that they do it, whether it's sales tax or in, in a property tax. Um, they're paying into the revenue in our state and are providing so much um, in terms of that. So. If we're criminalizing people for living their lives, we may need to look at our laws and see what needs to change and change the systems that are backed up, right? Um, people say, why don't they just get citizenship? Well, uh, my mom 
wasn't documented for a lot, very long time. It took her from you know when she came here in '88 to when I was in middle school um, for her to get uh, her her permanent residency or what people call a green card. So the system is backlogged, and with COVID, it's even more backlogged. The process of obtaining a restricted driver's license would look similar to getting a normal Class D driver's license, with a few differences in the cost and appearance of the licenses. It would look different, so it's not going to be like a regular uh, Idaho driver's license that's horizontally shaped, you know, it's, mm -hmm. gives you all the information, still will give you all the information of where the person lives, um, you know, their um, height eye color, all that. Um, the only difference is going to be, or it's not going to be horizontal, it's going to be vertical. So like a driver's permit for underage drivers. And it's going to say explicitly not for voting purposes and not for ID. While that believes that the benefits outweigh the potential risk for undocumented immigrants information being shared with law enforcement, but through appropriate channels, it can still be obtained. The P Office of Performance Evaluation uh, did a report and what they said is there's less hit and runs, there's less uh, deadly accidents, and, um, and also it just increases public safety overall. So for us, we categorize that as a, as a common sense solution. Ultimately, the Senate Transportation Committee narrowly voted to send that bill to the floor without recommendation, meaning the committee doesn't endorse the proposal but wants to allow further discussion on it.